In the last video, I extended the sides and back of the base and created a little bit of a stir when I used plywood to do that. And if you're interested in hearing my rationale for using that material, I recorded a video on my Scrapman channel talking about it, and there's a link to that in the description. And you should probably pause this video and go watch that one, because I'm going to be making more parts from wood, starting with the gantry sides, and I'm using half-inch Baltic birch plywood. Then I'm cutting on my big CNC that's almost 100% made from plywood. And as you can see, the CNC is making the holes that I need in these parts first. And I can use those holes to drive in screws so I can take the hold down clamps away and cut out the profile. And part of the reason why I'm using plywood for this is that I'm a woodworker. So I work with wood all the time. And I know what it can do. So I don't have any reservations about using it here. Anyway, the machine cut out the parts and I can bring them out to the workshop and install them on the new CNC. I'm also using another 3D printed part. This is a shim that goes between the linear bearings and the gantry sides. And it makes up the difference in thickness between the linear bearings and the lead screw nut. Another 3D printed part. And the process for building something like this is to make parts, put them on at least temporarily to see how everything lines up. And that's the beauty of making parts on the CNC. It's almost a guarantee that everything lines up. Now back to that CNC, I'm cutting out the back panel for the gantry. And this has a big hole in the middle and that's for access to the back of the Z axis. Once again, I can loosen the hold downs and drive screws to hold the piece in place and then cut the profile around the part. And then once again, I can bring it to the workshop and get it installed. And the reason why I have so many screws here is that I'm not using any glue on any of these assemblies. I want to be able to take these apart in the future if I want to change anything. And with the back installed, I can slide it back and forth to make sure that it slides smoothly. And it does. While I was making the sides, I also made parts to thicken the sides. And I'll get those glued and clamped in place. And once again, I'm using my fancy new aluminum clamps. Now to beef up the gantry, I'm cutting a piece of solid maple here. Once again, more wood. Oh, the horror but solid maple is quite strong and once again i'm a woodworker it's a material that i'm very familiar with so i know what it can do i need two of those cut to the right length and then i can get the first one slipped in and screwed on and once again lots of screws here because i'm not using any glue And I can get the top one put on the same way, get it located, get a clamp on there to hold it, and then drive the screws. With the majority of the gantry assembled, I can get the linear bearings put on. And once again, I need to cut those to length. And I'm using my angle grinder. And this is something that a lot of guys don't seem to realize. These rails are hardened steel. And they're thick. And they're strong. And all by themselves, they add a lot of stiffness to the gantry, just like they did on the Y-axis rails. Now, before I get those installed, I want to make sure that my gantry is square to the Y-axis on both sides, because if it's leaning forwards or leaning back, that will impact the mounting height for this part. And then I've got spacers that I'm going to lay on top of those rail caps that will lift the linear bearing up to the correct height. And once again, I'm using that screw that I made that's pointed to mark the holes so that I can drill them out and they'll be dead center. And while you're watching this, you might notice that after I put the side and back extension on, I actually painted those black on the inside. And that's not just to match the inside, it's to make it more water resistant. Like I said, and some people actually pointed out, I'm using flood cooler with this CNC. And so there will be a little bit of splashing going on and the paint will protect the plywood. 
And after I got all of the screws driven in the bottom rail and made sure that the bottom rail was actually nice and straight, I was back down to the old CNC to cut out another aluminum part. This one is from 1 8 inch thick stock and it's the plate that joins the lower linear bearings on the x-axis to the upper linear bearings. And I need this so that I can line up that upper linear bearing rail and make sure that it is absolutely parallel to the lower one. I got a couple of screws in each bearing block and that will ensure that they are located properly. And then I can start drilling and driving in the screws in that upper rail. And the idea here is to work on the screw that's right next to this carriage. Then after I get that one driven, I can move the carriage sideways and drive the next screw and so on until they're all installed. And you can see that the carriage moves smoothly. And here's some more concrete work that I need to get done so that it'll have time to dry. These are the spindle clamps and I 3D printed them, but I made them hollow so that I could fill them up with concrete. And I get that put in there and then tap them so that it gets rid of any air bubbles or pockets and make sure that they're full to the top. Often when you're building something from scratch, you need screws that are a specific size so that they don't bottom out. And I found that a really good way to cut them is to drill the right size hole in a piece of aluminum or wood so that the screw slides in and then I can use the edge of the stock as a guide for the blade on the grinder. And this is particularly handy when you have a lot of screws to cut. And then after you make the cut, you need to clean up the end. And my homemade belt sander is the perfect tool for that. Next is back down to the old CNC where I'm cutting another plate from 8th inch aluminum. This one goes over top of the one that's already on the carriage and it has a multitude of holes which is once again a big benefit of a CNC machine that can cut metal. It would take hours to lay out and drill all these holes manually. And then four of the holes I need to tap. And the tapping fluid I'm using here actually is bacon grease. In case you didn't know, bacon grease is a very good tapping fluid. Anyway, I'm tapping these with the parts put together so that I can temporarily fasten them together with the screws that screw in there so that I can drill the holes to fasten these two parts together. The holes that I'm drilling are ones that I actually missed when I cut out that first carriage plate, but that's no big deal. I've got a drill press after all, and I can do it on that. Now the screws that I'm using here are actually self-drilling, but I didn't rely on the tip to make the hole because I'm using aluminum that's fairly thick. And when I get them all driven in, I can flip it over and cut the ends off and grind them down almost flush with the surface. And here's another 3D printed lead screw nut. This one is for the x-axis lead screw. That's 3 eighths of an inch, unlike the y-axis, which is 5 eighths. I went with the bigger ones on the y-axis because they're pretty long and I wanted to eliminate whipping. And I'm driving screws through this into the holes that I tapped out in both plates. Now what I've got here is a piece of 3 eighths inch threaded rod that I've made pointy on the end. And I'm temporarily putting that in the lead screw nut so that point sticks out one side. And then I can get that put back on the linear bearings on the x-axis. And I'm going to use the point of that threaded rod to mark the exact location on the gantry sides for the stepper motor on one end and the bearing on the other after I take out the lead screw and move it so that it's pointing the other way. I could have done this in CAD, of course, and actually made the holes on the CNC when I was cutting out the sides. 
But that would mean I'd have to be very careful locating those linear bearings on the x-axis so it all lined up. This is a much better and accurate method. Just to make sure that I don't lose that, I'm going to mark it with a pencil as well.